Do you ever feel like your iPhone is just a sea of apps and you can't find the ones that actually make your life easier? With millions of apps in the App Store, finding the perfect ones can feel impossible. But today, I'll show you the essential and free iPhone apps that I rely on daily to stay productive, organized, and stress-free. By the end, you'll wonder how you ever lived without these apps. But first, let's take a step back and think about how we actually use our phones. Now, they're incredible tools, but let's be honest, without the right apps, they can quickly turn into a cluttered mess. So let's start with the apps that help with everyday essentials, the ones that I can't live without. If, like me, you don't like to carry all your cards around, then the Apple Wallet is a super way to have all these available. But have you ever been at the checkout, digging through your wallet or your apps, trying to find the right card or ticket? It's frustrating, right? And that's where Pass for Wallet comes in. This app lets you scan any barcode or QR code and save it as a custom card straight into your Apple Wallet. Within this app, I can scan any barcode or QR code, add some details, customize the look, and create a new Apple Wallet card. Within the app, it allows you to add different card types such as store cards, coupons, tickets, boarding passes, contact cards, and personal. It's really easy to use and means you have everything you need right there in your phone. Now that we've organized your cards, let's look at how you can simplify tracking all your deliveries with one powerful app. Picture this, you've just ordered something online and now you're obsessively refreshing your tracking emails, wondering when it's gonna arrive. Managing multiple deliveries can quickly become overwhelming, especially if you're ordering from different stores. And that's where the parcel app comes in. This handy tool consolidates all your deliveries into one place. You simply add your tracking number and it shows you the progress in real time. You can also link your Amazon account so it automatically tracks all your Amazon orders. I now use this app all the time. It saves me from digging through emails and jumping between courier websites to figure out where my packages are. The app does have some premium features such as notifications, removing ads and removing the limit of three tracked items at a time, but it's a small annual subscription, so if you get a lot of parcels and you want to keep track of them, it could certainly be worth it, but even so the free option will be fine for most people. Now that your deliveries are sorted, let's tackle something even trickier. Now every day we need to log into our apps or websites and remembering all our login details can be a challenge. With every app, every website and service needing a login, it's almost impossible to keep track of without sometimes using the same password, which we all know is a terrible idea. Think about how many times you've had to click forgot password, only to go through the hassle of resetting it again and again. Thankfully, Apple's standalone Passwords app makes all of this stress disappear. It securely stores all your login details and syncs them across your devices. And best of all, it's already built into your iPhone, iPad and Mac, so you don't need to download anything extra. Now with your logins under control, let's look at an app that makes your daily commute or road trip that little bit smoother. When I jump in the car, my phone connects wirelessly to CarPlay and using an automated focus mode, my phone switches straight into a focus mode for driving. Whilst I do have Apple Maps and Google Maps installed, the one I use most for navigation is Waze. It's easy to use and gives you real-time information and updates for your journey as you go. Even when I know the route I'm travelling, I have all my common destinations set up as favourites and so will select the destination anyway. It has really saved me so many times from road closures ahead, so I can easily reroute and avoid getting stuck on the journey. Now whilst Waze helps me stay ahead on the road, what about staying ahead of the weather? I did used to jump between several different apps, but over the years, the Apple default weather app has come quite a long way. It now provides accurate forecasts, interactive maps, and even alerts for severe weather. For everyday use, it's simple and clean, and it gets the job done. Now we just open it pretty much every morning just to check the hourly forecast and help plan the day. While the default weather app is great for most people, sometimes you might need a little more detail, especially if you're like me and you need to keep an eye on the weather systems for specific sporting activities. And that's where the next app comes in. The Windy app offers detailed visual maps of weather systems, including weather patterns, isobars, rainfall, and even cloud cover. Whether you're a pilot, a sailor, or just a weather enthusiast, it gives you all the data you need to plan with confidence. And since I have my own private pilot license, I do rely on Windy to analyze wind speeds and cloud cover before flight. Even the free version is packed with features and the visual maps make it really easy to see what's happening at a glance. Windy presents visual maps with weather systems, isobars, rainfall, temperature, cloud cover, and many more layers. It gives current and predicted maps, and if you're interested in the weather, definitely one to check out. Now, Windy is fantastic for weather enthusiasts, but let's face it, planning your week isn't just about the weather. 
That's why the next app is a must have for staying organized and managing your own time. We can't possibly try to remember every event or appointment or even birthdays. So our calendar is a central storage for all these things. Trying to keep track of everything in your head or multiple places can lead to a bit of chaos. And that's why a solid calendar app is essential. Anything that has a set date and time should really be in here. So for this, I simply use Apple's built-in calendar. It's free, it's straightforward, and it allows multiple calendar accounts so you can keep work, family, and hobbies color-coded. And it gives me the views that I need to see each day, week, or month at an easy glance. So in addition to remembering events, what about remembering specific things we need to do? And this is why we also need a good task management app. In its simplest form, it's a checklist where you can list the tasks and check them off when you complete. Now the app you might choose to use may vary depending on how many tasks you have and how you like to keep them organized. But for my own use, I actually use two different apps. Now the inbuilt Apple Reminders app is perfect for quick, straightforward lists like groceries or casual to-dos or for reminders you want to show on your calendar. You can even create tasks with Siri. So if you're driving and remember something, you could just ask Siri to add it to a particular list. But for more complex task management like organizing projects or breaking down larger goals, I always turn to Things 3. It strikes a perfect balance between simplicity and power. Having tried many other task apps, I always seem to come back to Things 3 because its feature set was just what I needed and I especially like the widgets to help me keep them at a glance on my home screen. Organization is one thing, but what about managing all the information we deal with every day? Let me show you how I stay on top of it all. To start with is a built-in app, Apple Notes. It's more than just a notepad though, it has structures and markup that can help us file away and retrieve information we need easily and quickly. It's also packed full of features and I use Notes pretty extensively every day. In Notes you can store documents and voice notes, you can use it for checklists and so much more. If you want to learn more I've actually covered this in another video and I'll leave a link here in the description below. Now apart from notes, sometimes I want to store larger files. I don't actually have a preferred storage method for this, so I currently use partly Apple's own files app, but I also sometimes work in a Windows machine. So I have a OneDrive account and I also have a Google Drive account. However, one advantage of the files app is that I can link my OneDrive and Google Drive accounts. So I can access these all in one space from within the files app, it saves the need to jump between different apps all the time. Depending on your storage needs, there's pros and cons of each service. There may be different costs for extra storage space and the uploads and downloads speeds can also vary. Let me know in the comments if you have a favorite and why. Now we all use our phones for communication. Let's look at the tools I use to stay connected, whether for work or for personal life. Juggling multiple apps for personal chats, work messages and emails can get messy quite fast. Important messages can get buried or worse, even forgotten. So I use the built-in messages app for most of my messaging, but I also use WhatsApp and to a lesser extent Facebook Messenger and Telegram. I have these apps on the main home screen at the bottom for easy access. When it comes to email, I've tested a lot of apps, but I always seem to come back to Apple Mail. And um, well, why? Well, for me, it does everything I need. And recent iOS 18 updates, such as the categorization of emails, can be useful if you get a lot of emails. I use Apple Mail to manage multiple accounts from personal to work emails all in one place. It's simple and reliable and it gets the job done without any unnecessary distractions. Once we've communicated and stayed in touch, it's time to consume content more efficiently. And these apps make browsing, reading and staying informed effortless. I very rarely watch TV for any news these days. It's all too easy to get lost in the rabbit hole of news and opening endless tabs on your browser, wasting valuable time. So to keep updated with general day-to-day -day news, I typically rely on the Apple News app. I have this set up with various news platforms and other interest areas. I don't spend a lot of time with this, as I often find that news can just become a bit of a distraction from getting things done. But it's there when I need to quickly dip in just for general updates. Now, although I'm an advocate for using mostly Apple's own apps for most purposes, for web browsing, I tend to use a combination of both Safari and Chrome. Now, Apple does push heavily that their Safari browser is private, and I don't doubt that compared to Chrome, but there are some privacy differences. On my iPhone, I do tend to use Safari, but when I'm using my MacBook and when I'm using my Windows PC, then my go-to browser is generally Chrome. I have Chrome set up with multiple profiles, which helps me keep my different workflows separate when I may be working for different clients. One thing that I will mention here is that on iOS, you can now set your default apps. So if you use Chrome over Safari, for example, you can now set that as your default. To change your default, head into settings, scroll down to apps, and then into default apps. And then you can set the defaults, not just for the browser of your choice, but for other common apps, including email, messaging, calling, and passwords. 
We all want to stay healthy, but let's be real, not everyone has the time or motivation for intense fitness routines or complex health tracking systems. I'll admit I'm not a fitness junkie. At most I'll wear my Apple Watch which tracks my everyday activities and also my sleep at night. So to monitor these, I simply use the built-in health app. It's a comprehensive app designed to bring all your health data into one place. I also have a set of scales which link by Bluetooth to an app called FitDays and this also syncs the data automatically into the health app so I can track my daily weight. For tracking my food intake I use the app MyFitnessPal. I use this to log my daily food intake which helps me monitor what I'm eating. Paid plans are available on the app which do unlock some more in-depth tracking and other features but for me the basic free elements do what I need. Have you ever stared at a blank screen stuck on how to start an email, solve a problem or brainstorm new ideas? It's frustrating and we all hit mental roadblocks sometimes and finding solutions can take longer than it should, especially if you're juggling a million other tasks. Well now AI is gradually filtering into our everyday lives. Although ChatGPT is now integrated partly into iOS 18 for supported iPhone devices, I also use the native ChatGPT app pretty much every day, either on my iPhone, my iPad or my MacBook. It's my go-to app for brainstorming video ideas, refining scripts and even solving tech-related issues. The paid versions unlock extra features and early access to new updates as well, but even the free version can be powerful enough to boost your productivity. I have a paid subscription which increases the limits for its use and gives me early access to new models and additional features. If you haven't tried ChatGPT yet, then definitely do get the app and give it a go. I think you'll be surprised at how quickly it can become quite an essential tool. Now that you've got the ultimate app lined up for your iPhone, there's one more step to take to set it up correctly for maximum efficiency. And in this next video, I'll show you how to set up focus modes to eliminate distractions, streamline your day and unlock your iPhone's full potential.